welcome to the Barbara Show. This is the show that comes to your screens in Rwanda, outside Rwanda, every Sunday from 7 p.m. to 7.30. And we appreciate your support. We appreciate your comments. We appreciate your subscriptions on YouTube and the feedback you give us is tremendously appreciated. We always come to give you inspiration, motivation, and hoping that you learn a thing or two. And for this specific episode, it centers around my curiosity. I know that sounds selfish, but it centers around my curiosity and I hope that will also help you. So for a very long time, I've always been curious to know how the Rwanda Defense Force works. I've had questions that I didn't really find a place to get answers from. And I hope that today, as I pursue to get my questions answered, and as I pursue to get inspiration from how our army works, you could have your answers also. For this episode, I'm welcoming Colonel Ronald Rugivanga, who is the RDF spokesperson, to enlighten us on the inside story. I like to think of it as an inside story of some things you may not know about the RDF rather than, other than what you've had in the media or on specific events, occasions, but you also had questions. So Kanur Givanga is here to answer those questions. You're welcome, sir. Thank you for having oh, me. Or rather, I am welcome. Oh yes, you're <laughs> welcome to RDF headquarters. Yes, yes. Mm. So. There is a group of Rwandans who grew up knowing Rwanda Patriotic Army. And then there is another generation that knows Rwanda Defense Force. What is the difference? When did this switch happen? And what's the value has this switch added to the army? Oh, thank you. Um, the Rwanda Patriotic Army was an armed wing of the Rwanda Patriotic Front which was uh, formed in the 1980s to liberate our country against uh, bad leadership that was characterized by uh, divisionism, sectarianism, and genocide ideology. And uh, this army fought a four-year war from 1990 uh, to 1994, culminating in the, uh, the genocide, the halting of a genocide that took place in 1994 against the Tutsis. Uh, but this army kept on fighting uh, the genocidal forces who uh, conducted an insurgency in the northern part of, of, of Rwanda. And uh, so we kept you know, fighting through and until we actually pursued them uh, inside the Congo. I think you know what happened after that. Uh, we pursued them to the point that we actually um, changed the leadership in, Co in Congo. Uh, but these forces remained in the forests of Congo. And, but in 2002, there was a general uh, decision that the army needs to be transformed into a professional and structured army from a rebel force that it was to a more organized force. So there was this general decision to, you know, to organize it, to reorganize it uh, to the Rwanda Defense Force with the Chief of Defense Staff at the helm of its leadership. Uh, we organized it into a tri-service, Air Force, Land Force, and Reserve Forces uh, with Chiefs of Staff for each of the services. And we generally made the transformations uh, within uh, the structure and organization uh, of the force to make it more professional we also included the ex-FAL, who were former soldiers of uh, the, the force that was, uh, we were fighting against. So we integrated them and formed a new force with a new name, the Rwanda Defense Force. And that happened in 2002. What value did this switch add to the whole army in general, such as integrating the ex-FAL? First and foremost, I must say that the values that we espoused as the RPA continued values of patriotism, loyalty, selfless service, uh, integrity, and several others, mm -hmm. valor. Uh, they kept, we kept the values that we started with. Mm -hmm. uh, so the change of names mm -hmm. did not necessarily change our character and our values. We maintained them 
uh, unity, working together, uh, pursuing excellence in everything we do. Uh, so we, we kept our values. Mm -hmm. uh, you have mentioned it, uh, after taking over the country, now you are profession you move to professionalizing this armed group into a professional army and we have seen it support other countries we have seen so many things being achieved what has been the cost of placing the rdf in the global arena first and foremost uh, i will start by saying that you cannot put a price to professionalism if you want to know uh, how important it is to professionalize. Try the lack of it. Yes. It's very costly. Mm. So in our agenda, we had to improve every day in everything we do. Through training, through educating our servicemen, mm -hmm. it must be noted that uh, many people interrupted their studies yes. to join the struggle. Yes. So after the, uh, the liberation, many of our servicemen were, went back to school okay. to pursue their studies, to improve themselves. So there was a general drive towards developing ourselves to be better, mm -hmm. to be more professional, to be more educated. So we also uh, introduced a number of training institutions. Uh, we established a national training center to train recruits and special forces mm -hmm. to become better uh, performers. Uh, we also established um, the uh, officers course in GACO, mm -hmm. uh, cadet course, which initially started as a one-year course, but it, uh, it eventually went on to become a university degree uh, as well as cadet uh, course. So uh, they pursue close to four years uh, degrees in medicine, engineering, physics, chemistry, biology, okay. and military science. Mm -hmm. uh, we also established uh, a training center for our commanders, uh, junior commanders uh, in Gabiro, commanders uh, at platoon level that's fighting with 33 men, mm -hmm. and then 100 men company commanders uh, course. And then we also established another course at a higher level, okay. and above. Okay. At the RDF Command and Staff College in Nyatinama, which basically trains officers uh, to command battalions and above. Mm -hmm. So, and we also established a Rwanda Peace Academy, mm -hmm. uh, which is also in Nyatinama, which uh, works along with the one in Gako, which trains our officers to be better at peacekeeping operations. Uh, but we also do that uh, specialized courses in peacekeeping uh, activities in uh, Nyachina. Mm -hmm. So that's what we have done uh, so far. We are working on actually upgrading uh, to a higher level to train our generals. Currently, our generals are being trained abroad in different uh, defense colleges, colonels and generals in defense colleges uh, abroad in different countries, the US. Uh, Belgium, Ghana, Nigeria, South Africa. But we're working towards also uh, eventually uh, starting our own mm -hmm. defense college for the higher level strategic uh, leaders mm -hmm. uh, training. So we have actually uh, traveled this journey towards professionalization by undertaking both formal and uh, uh, informal training. Thank you so much because uh I, from the outside, have, have come across news where we see graduations happening and I've always wondered, okay, so Nyachinama, what happens? So what happens in Gako? So, so this, this really helps. We come across men and women in uniform in the offices, yes, but also on the streets and across the whole country. What we think of is the security directly, which is a given, but I presume, and we have seen it also in the news, but someone else may have not seen it in the diaspora, other activities that the RDF engages in. Could you take us through what you do? Yes, our primary role is uh, to defend the territorial integrity and national sovereignty of the Republic of Rwanda. That's our primary role. But we have several secondary roles that are given to us. We are legally mandated to carry out those roles. 
and these are one uh, to participate in social economic transformation activities. We do this uh, every year. Uh, we participate, uh, we work closely with line ministries, such as the Ministry of uh, Infrastructure, to help construct roads, bridges, houses for the disadvantaged, uh, IDP model villages all over the country. Um, we also work with ministries such as health to build uh, hospitals, health centers around the country. Uh, we work with the Ministry of Education to increase the number of classrooms around the country, uh, the schools and, and classrooms. So we, we participate in different uh, socio-economic uh, transformation activities. Uh, we have different units within our force that uh, are directly involved in these activities, such as the Engineering Brigade, the Reserve Forces. We also actually participate in environmental protection activities. We oh, okay. plant trees, we build uh, terraces, the modern terraces. Uh, we also uh, uh, participate in farming, which is also the backbone of our economy. So the RDF believes that uh, in order for it to achieve sustainable uh, peace and security, mm -hmm. we need to improve human security. Mm -hmm. So that is why we, we take it very seriously as a role. Uh, the other role that we perform, as we earlier alluded, uh, is peacekeeping operations. Uh, we participate in these peacekeeping operations based on our history. The history of genocide, in which millions of people are killed. Genocide against the Tutsi. Uh, so we believe that uh, by participating in these operations, uh, we are actually doing what others failed to do uh, in Rwanda. And we strongly believe and are committed to this endeavor. We signed the 2015 Kigali Principles to protect civilians uh, wherever we are called upon. And that is why we are in different parts of, of the continent and sometimes beyond, such as Haiti, mm -hmm. uh, to, to carry out precisely that. Um, the other role that we perform uh, is um, uh, to, to, to participate in um, fighting against uh, uh, the effects of uh, disaster, such as floods. Uh, we also partake. We work with the line ministry, disaster management, uh, to deal with disasters and you know the effect of the disaster on communities floods, landslides, and, uh, and issues such as that. So we are very committed to working with different players. Uh, that's it. Yeah, um, mm. something comes to my mind. Post-COVID, or while we are still in COVID-19, everyone has been affected in their different lines of duty. How has the RDF been? I, I know that sounds broad, but how have you been affected by COVID-19? Just like any other section of uh, the community, the RDF definitely was affected. And we must also, again, partake to national initiatives towards fighting mm -hmm. uh, this pandemic. Yes. And we did quite a great lot. Uh, we established command centers, worked with different players. We transported um, vaccines to different parts of, of the country. And our, our officers are involved in you know, in training people on how to fight uh, this virus. So yeah, we, are, we partake in all activities wow. to do with fighting uh, COVID-19. Thank you so much. Yeah. Let's take a 15 minute break. Uh, if you're following this show, just stay tuned. If you've missed a few minutes uh, of the episode, you can always go back to the channel of the show on YouTube and view the past minutes. We're coming back. Thank you.
Welcome back to the Barber Show. We are at the RDF headquarters with a spokesperson of RDF, Colonel Ronald Givanga, and we're having a conversation on how the Rwanda Defense Forces works, things you might know or things you might not know. Learn a few things and even be inspired. Welcome back, sir. Thank you. So during the liberation struggle, there was a battalion of women called Yankee. And fast forward, we're in Rwanda, we have women in leadership, but there are also women in uniform in leadership. Take us through the role of women in the RDF today. The role of women in RDF, just like uh, men, mm -hmm. women participate in nearly every activity. Mm -hmm. uh, it started in the liberation struggle, mm -hmm. where women were very fundamental, helping us in every way, mm -hmm. from the recruitment to the development of the forces. Uh, women were very instrumental. And uh, fast forward, we um, continued to recruit women mm -hmm. in our rank and file. Uh, I think you've watched a number of uh, videos showing wi women units on Kandet. Yes. Um, and we, are, we take gender very seriously in RDF. Mm -hmm. The national perspective of uh, gender is, is what we adopted. Mm -hmm. And uh, we established a gender desk in uh, 2007. Uh, to deal with issues to do with uh, gender equality, um, fight against gender-based violence, and to streamline generally issues to do with uh, gender, gender sensitivities. So we have a gender policy that is being improved and worked upon uh, so that it can you know, deal with all the issues related to gender. So RDF indeed is very, very... Um, uh, concerned about this issue, mm -hmm. just like the national level yes. discussions always focus on it. Yes. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about Cabo Delgado, because when people think of RDF recently, mm -hmm. what comes to mind for them is Mozambique and Cabo Delgado. So we have the RDF in Mozambique, we have them making strides in restoring state authority, and then we have the Mozambique authorities really appreciating what the RDF is doing. Then we have the international investors who are also trying to regain their business. Then we have the international media. <laughs> we have all seen what the international media does. Uh, how are you managing all of that? Well, let's start with Cabo de Galdo. How did we get there? Yes. Uh, we got there um, on a request by the uh, government of Mozambique mm -hmm. to the government of Rwanda uh, to help restore state authority by conducting combat operations, security operations, stabilization and security sector reform. Mm -hmm. So we, uh, we got there in July and within one month we had cleared enemy pockets in the areas that were given, two districts, mm -hmm. Palma and Mosimbo and Ipraya. Mm -hmm. So we pursued the insurgents to the forests in a place called Mbau. Uh, we dislodged them as well from Mbau. Pursued them further to the Mesaro River, which uh, is on the borderline between uh, uh, on the districts of Nagande, Maidumbe, uh, and, uh, yeah, and, and Nakara. Mm -hmm. Now, these districts are actually uh, occupied by SADC. So that is why we're working closely with SADC to ensure that uh, we deal with uh, these insurgents from different directions. So we are sharing intelligence, uh, uh, participating in different uh, operations on different sides to ensure that we deal with the problem of insurgencies. This problem has existed for four years and uh, we are happy to say that at least to a significant degree we reduced their combat effectiveness and uh, they are rendered now a bit on the run. Mm -hmm. mm? They, are, they, they are not conducting any operations within the population, mm -hmm. so which is a good thing. So we are still continuing with our operations to stabilize the situation. That means returning uh, the population back to their homes. Mm -hmm. This is a process, it takes time. We have already completed a number of camps that uh, were in the northern part, uh, Kwitunda, uh, Patakua, and uh, 
uh, Kilimane. These areas now are, uh, the camps were, were more or less uh, resettled in mm -hmm. uh, their homes. But we are still now working on Mosimbo and Ipraya. It's quite big. And many of these refugees, it's important to note that they actually went to different districts, some of which are within the SADC area of responsibility. So we have to work closely with SADC to ensure that we bring them back and then start the process of uh, social economic uh, development, mm. which is very critical in fighting against insurgencies. Yes. Because these are the very reasons why insurgents appear in the first place. Yes. So we shall partake, we shall participate in restoring order and also something we always do wherever we deploy, mm -hmm. participate in social economic uh, development activities, okay. uh, ensure that uh, there is confidence um, uh, on our forces as well as the government of uh, Mozambique. So that's very, very important and we are working on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so when we hear that our forces are assisting in other African countries, there is a sense of pride that we get. But there is also the average Rwandan who could sit and think, what else does this benefit Rwanda? How else is Rwanda benefited from having our forces uh, deployed in different African, even beyond Africa countries? To be honest with you, there are a lot of benefits. Mm -hmm. uh, first and foremost, we live by the ideals that we fight for. And we agreed, we are, like I mentioned earlier, we, we believe in protecting civilians, whatever we are called upon. We started in 2004 and we have never turned back. Uh, we were the first to deploy in Darfur. The mission ended and I believe we have registered a significant progress in Darfur. We went to South Sudan. South Sudan is still volatile, but uh, we are participating with the forces there uh, to restore uh, order and sanity. Uh, we also involved in CAL, did a significant role in restoring uh, state authority in CAL. Uh, there was a successful election that was held a few years ago, and uh, our forces were involved in trying to bring order during the election. Mm -hmm. And since then, we have deployed our forces both under the UN uh, mandate, as well as under bilateral agreement with the, with the government of uh, Central African Republic. And so far, so good. Mm -hmm. uh, things seem to be moving in the right direction. And so we are proud of what we have done there. And that is why uh, we feel that we can do more. This is not enough. We need to do more to restore order, mm -hmm. wherever we are called upon. Mm -hmm. So Mozambique is one area that we felt, just look at how it was before. Yes. Then it gives pride to mm -hmm. feel that you, are, you partook in an act mm -hmm. of stopping endless killings, beheadings, and you know, mm -hmm. in a country uh, such as Mozambique. Mm -hmm. So that's something we, we feel uh, we should always do, mm -hmm. and we committed to. Uh, the other thing I can say also is that we, we are also gaining uh, military experience yes. and professionalism. That's part of what we are supposed to do. That's our job. So every time we operate, we become even better. Mm -hmm. But we are also serving a noble cause, mm -hmm. a very important cause, protecting civilians. Yes. And that should be good enough. Mm. That should be good enough. I agree with you. As we head to close to the closing of this episode, um, one personal question, or maybe not so personal. Assume I'm a parent, and I've just finished paying for school fees, tuition for my son, somewhere in a high-end university. It could be in Europe, it could be in America, it could be anywhere. I've invested so much in my child. And then after this conversation, I feel like I would like my son to join the RDF. How should I talk to my son or my daughter? And why should I actually tell them, listen, when you go back to Rwanda, don't go to look for a job. Apply, you know, je l'honneur, as we know it here in Rwanda, when people write these letters applying for jobs. But think of the RDF. They are, they are How to go about that? There are more than a thousand reasons to join RDF. Mm -hmm. But I'll just look at a few. Yes. One, um, this is a professional army. Mm -hmm one that everybody is proud of. 
their achievements are enormous. Well, there are different sectors of our national life that the RDF participates in. I talked about national transformation. Yes. So we need engineers, we need doctors, we need uh, historians, we need uh, teachers, we need media, yes. we need uh, journalists. We need... So there is no facet of our national life that the military does not need. Mm -hmm. So that's a good reason to start from. So lawyers, engineers, and other professionals have a place in the military, okay? Mm -hmm. So it's important that uh, they understand that. And the roles that I outlined cover every facet of national life. Mm -hmm. So we, are, we welcome every you know, category yes, yes. <laughs> of a professional. To join the defense forces and to engage and in to engage in a, in a national, national transformation. transformation yes wow thank mm. you so much for allowing us to have this conversation thank you for having me yes i'm hoping mm. you were inspired as i was and if you happen to be following this episode and you've been thinking what else can i do in the rdf well if you're a lawyer you can join thank you so much for following this episode like i always say every time i close the episodes may god bless you and thank you for the support Wakoze gukurikira ikiganiro The Barber Show. Nimbo kibonye kuri YouTube The Barber Show. Kora subscribe ili gukomeza kubona makuru n'ibindi biganiro byinshi bikomeza kuza. Nimbo dukurikira kuri Facebook, nimbo dukurikira kuri Instagram, nimbo dukurikira kuri YouTube. Twishimiye cyane no kuri Twitter uzaje gukomeza kubona amakuru ndetse n'umukasibe kuri iki kiganiro kuri Sibo TV. Turabashimiye rero kumanya wanyu mwaduhaye imana ibyo